Is infinite banking a scam? My name is Eddie Gartner. This is Epic Financial Strategies, and we're going to examine today the whole life insurance strategy commonly referred to as infinite banking or becoming your own bank and what this actually means for you. What is infinite banking? Infinite banking involves using a cash value whole life insurance policy as a personal bank where policyholders can borrow and repay funds. Skepticism often arrives because it requires costly, complex insurance policies and significant ongoing payments, leading some to question its overall practicality and value. So what we're gonna get into is five points to help you understand the infinite banking concept and how these policies are designed. Skepticism because of complexity doesn't really have to occur. If you're working with the right people that can explain to you in detail how these policies work, they're actually really simple to understand. So number one, this is a legitimate financial strategy. The infinite banking concept introduced by R. Nelson Nash is a recognized financial strategy that involves using cash value whole life insurance policies as a personal banking system. This approach has been used for over two decades and is based on solid financial principles. The first of those principles is this idea of keeping your money in your own pocket, right? Having that money in your world and not leaving your world. So let me give you an example of this. If you were to finance your own debt, right? Let's say you wanted to go out and purchase a vehicle. Well, you could purchase a vehicle and you could pay the finance company the money for that vehicle, never keeping that money in your world, right? It's always going outside of your world. And this means that you're paying those interest costs to the uh, financing company. But if you were to build up cash value in a whole life insurance and use that money to actually finance the debt, you're keeping that money working for you because you're borrowing the insurance company's money. And yes, as you create that strategy to pay the money back in, you are paying the interest charge to the insurance company. But what happens over time is that money keeps continuing to compound inside the whole life insurance, creating greater wealth over time that far surpasses the borrowing cost from the insurance company. Two, these insurance companies are regulated by government agencies. Whole life insurance, like all life insurance products, is strictly regulated by state and federal agencies. These regulations ensure that insurance companies operate under stringent legal standards and are required to maintain reserve funds to guarantee they can meet their policy obligations. Here in New Jersey, the NJDOBI, which is the New Jersey Department of Banking and Insurance, they look at all the insurance contracts and they are responsible for the forms that are being submitted. They look at the annuity payments, they look at life insurance, and they regulate everything there. They're also responsible for making sure that the insurance companies are paying into the guarantee fund in that state to ensure that all contracts meet their obligations. On the broader scale, there's what's called the NAIC. That's the National Association of Insurance Commissioners. And the purpose there is to get all 50 states together, plus five other territories for the US, and have them all on the same page. The idea is let's create some standards and making sure that everybody's following the same rules and regulations when it comes to insurance contracts. So simply put, this means not just the state, but also the federal oversight on these life insurance companies to make sure that when you're putting money into this life insurance contract, you're going to get exactly what they showed you on those illustrations on that guaranteed side and making sure that these companies fulfill on their obligations. And when you're in the industry of guarantees, making sure that obligations are fulfilled is the most important thing. So this brings us exactly to point number three, guaranteed cash value growth. Whole life insurance policies offer a guaranteed cash value accumulation which policyholders can use for loans to finance personal or business expenses, effectively creating a personal line of credit. It's guaranteed, it's not a scam. With life insurance, when you're looking at that illustration, there's really two sides to that contract. There's the guaranteed side, which this is talking about. There's guaranteed cash value growth, there's a guaranteed death benefit, and there's a guaranteed premium, right? The idea there is that the insurance company can never come back and ask you for more money 
to keep this as an insurance contract. And even if they're not profitable and not putting a dividend back into that plan, you're still going to have guaranteed growth on that cash value. So that's one point. But on the other side of that ledger is the dividend. And that's what people really look at. And we'll talk about later in this video because that's important for the overall growth of your contract. But furthermore, you have contractual rights to that cash value. And so you can leverage that cash value for other opportunities. And we'll also talk a little bit more about the leveraging of the policy and what that looks like. When looking at whole life insurance, what some people fail to look at is they fail to look at it as an asset class, right? This product, the cash values inside the product are not correlated to the stock market or any other part of the market. So what that means is that if the stock market falls 20 or 30% like it has in the past or housing falls or the bond market falls, the cash value inside of that life insurance is protected. It's not going to fall. And in fact, if it's with a mutual life insurance company that pays dividends, we have history of them paying dividends in the Great Depression. We have history of them paying dividends during 2008 when the financial world was collapsing, during the pandemic, and also just as, uh, as early or you know, as close back as 2022 when the market dropped about 20%. They were still paying dividends. So not only did that cash value not fall, but it actually increased. So this brings us to point four, the dividends. And this is something that we talked about a little bit before is the dividend earning potential, right? Many whole life insurance policies are issued by mutual insurance companies that pay dividends to policyholders. These dividends can enhance the growth of the cash value, which can be used within the infinite banking concept to fund policy loans or purchase additional paid up additions. So you're thinking, okay, what's a paid up addition? What are you talking about with these dividends? Well, simply put a life insurance, mutual life insurance company, when they pay dividends, they're paying them to the policy, the company owners, right? So when you own a, a policy with a mutual life insurance company, you become a part owner in that company and becoming an owner in that company entitles you to the profitability of the company, right? And that profitability comes back to you in the form of a dividend. So not only do you have the guaranteed contractual growth, but you also have this dividend component. And when that dividend comes back to you, you have a couple different options. You could take it as a check, right? And, and just have the cash and do something with it. Or if you're looking to use the infinite banking strategy, what you would likely be doing, especially in the early years, is using that dividend to purchase more paid up additions. What that means is it's actually taking that dividend increasing the cash value and that cash value increase also buys more life insurance so it increases that death benefit right so that dividend comes in instead of you taking it as cash for yourself you're putting it back into the policy and letting it grow the cash value and grow the death benefit then one of the other options that you could have later on is when you take loans from the policy and you create a repayment structure for yourself on those policy loans. If you have an instance where you can't pay interest on the policy or you don't personally want to come out of pocket to pay those loans back, you could use that dividend to pay interest and loans on the policy, therefore reducing any of your out of pocket costs. Now that you kind of understand the dividend concept and the idea of the growth that continues to happen with these policies, it's important that when you're looking at a mutual life insurance company, you want to understand how they treat their dividend. Meaning, if you leverage money from the policy, are you still getting the full dividend and interest earning potential that you have? Or, because there are some companies out there that do this, are they cutting that dividend and earning potential? So for example, if I have $100,000 of cash value in my policy and I take 50,000 to go and do something with, am I earning interest and dividends on that full 100,000? or am I just earning on what's left in the plan, which would be the 50,000? And that's an important thing to look at and why it's really important when you're, when you're working with somebody that you understand the ins and outs of these policies because each company handles their dividend a little differently.
And here at Epic, we know how to set these policies up. We know what companies are the right ones and how they treat their dividends. So if you're looking to talk with somebody, go in that description box. There's a link there. One of the team members can reach out to you and help walk you through that process. Now let's get on to the last point. Point number five is the tax benefit of life insurance. The growth of cash value in whole life insurance is tax deferred and the loans taken against cash value are generally tax free. This can provide significant tax advantages compared to other financial instruments. Again, what we're looking at is making sure that the policy is set up properly, right? Because that were generally tax-free. Those loans are generally tax-free and the only time they wouldn't be is if the policy isn't set up as life insurance, it's set up as something else, right? Which is called a modified endowment contract. But if you want to learn more about a modified endowment contract, drop in the comments and we'll do a video specifically on that to explain it. But back to the tax benefits, right? Think about all the money that you're putting into this plan and it's growing deferred from taxation, right? Money that you take back out of the plan, you can take back everything you put in without paying tax on it. And once you get to that point, you can then start taking loans from the policy. So these are different strategies that you can use to make sure that the money that you're utilizing while you're alive, you're not paying income tax on. And when you pass away, that life insurance death benefit will go income tax free to your heirs, right? Whoever you name as the beneficiary. And think about that and contrast it with leaving a 401k to somebody, right? When you leave that 401k, whether it's to your spouse, to your children, to your grandchildren, that money is going to be taxed. Everything that comes out of it's getting income tax on it because it's a traditional 401k. So think about that, right? And if you left a million dollars in your 401k for somebody to inherit versus leaving a million dollar death benefit, that million dollar death benefit because there's no income tax is going to go a lot further than the million that was left in that 401k. While infinite banking using whole life insurance isn't a scam, it's a sophisticated financial strategy that requires a long-term commitment and a clearer understanding of the costs, risks, and potential benefits. It's crucial for individuals considering this strategy to thoroughly research and possibly consult with the financial advisor to determine if it aligns with their financial goals and circumstances. And this is the case, right? So, so often people are, are watching things on YouTube. You guys are doing the right thing, trying to get that information, but you need somebody to talk to. Again, like I said before, go in that description box, click the link in there, Fill out the information. One of the team members at Epic here will walk you through the infinite banking strategy. But before they even do that, what they're going to need to do is really get to understand your financial uh, world right now, where you are currently, what you're looking to achieve, and if this strategy even makes sense so they can help walk you through that. If you've made it this far in the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and like it, share, subscribe. Right, and again, drop a comment. This helps us get the channel out to more people. We really appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for more.